So here is a make sure you got quiz two version two. Um, I made this up in a real hurry. I'm not completely positive that all of the answers worked out okay. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, once again, name, okay, for the joke. And Cirque, she gets everything right all the time. Assuming these two figures are similar, that means they're the same shape. Find the missing measurements. I'm going to give you some kind of a shape on your test. It may even be the same one. I may go with a different jagged thing. What you have to do, Nikki, first of all, is somewhere there are two sides, one from each shape. I'll call this big shape and small shape so that I, you know what we're talking about. There must be a side in the big shape that I also know in the small shape. And I notice it's this one and this one. These are the two that I know. That's going to be my conversion factor. In fact, my conversion factor is going to be big shape over small shape, 11 over 5, equals W. Natasha, W, is it in the small shape or in the big shape? Yeah. Is 5 in the small shape or in the big shape? So I better put the W on the bottom, small shape on the bottom, small shape on the bottom. What does W match with in the big shape, Natasha? How do I solve one of these? Cross multiply. Uh, w is going to be 5 times 12. And then you would divide by 11 to get the W by itself. It's going to be 60 divided by 11, which is not going to work out evenly. I think I said to you last time, if it doesn't work out evenly, unless I say different, Emma, go to two decimal places. So it's going to be 60 divided by 11. 5.445, 5. 5.45, 5.45 centimeters. Uh, first of all, it's not 5.4. I would take a half mark off for that. 5.5 I'd live with, but I said to go to two decimal places, okay? This one we are marking, this one we are counting, so make sure you're marking your own and be honest, please. All you're doing is cheating yourself if you cheat yourself. Uh, X equals, okay, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm still going to use the same conversion factor, the two sides whose pair, the pair of sides that I know, I know that the 11 and the 5 go together big over small. X in the small triangle, so Tanner, it's going to go in the small triangle, on the, in the small triangle, in the small shape, goes on the small shape. And X goes with what, Tanner? Once again, cross multiply and solve. X is going to be 5 times 15, and I'd have 11X to get the X by itself, I'd divide by 11. Then 5 times 15 divided by 11, I get 6.82. Again, I'm taking a half mark off, and I'm saying learn to round off properly. Again, I'll take that right now on the test. I'm probably going to say go to two decimal places. Okay, right? Remember, when you're looking at your calculator answer, think about, don't just write it down. You got to think, if I'm rounding off, what's next to the one? Eight, it becomes a two, right? Joel, what's the next one? Yeah. Sorry? Because I asked you to. Why? Because I asked. I'll never get tired of that joke. Um, so letter Y. But those of you that were away, you can decide if you want to write this down or if you want to watch and then just for practice on your own, try the quiz at home, watch the video and mark it yourself. I'm going to put an omit next to your score so it won't raise or lower your score, those four of you that were away. It might in that you didn't get a chance to get your mistakes out of your system before the test. That's really what the quizzes are for. I've always said the more you get wrong on the quizzes, the better, because you probably won't get the same mistake twice in a row, in theory. So uh, I'm still going to use the same conversion factor here, Joel. Uh, it's going to be big shape over small shape. Y is in the big shape. Since the big shape is on top, I'll put the big shape on top. Joel, what does Y go with in the small shape? Okay. Again, it's going to be cross multiply. Have I mentioned lately that cross multiplying is one of the most useful skills that we get? Well, it is. You're going to get y equals 2.5 times 11, and then you would divide by 5 to get the y by itself. I'm not showing that step because I'm trying to fit this all on one screen. 2. Point, come here, try that again. 2.5 times 11 divided by 5. 
and I get 5.5 even, well, to one decimal place. How about Z? Let's see. I'm still going to use the same conversion factor, 11 over 5. And Z is in the big shape, big shape on top, big shape on top. Z goes with uh, 4. So Z is going to be 11 times 4 divided by 5. It's going to be uh, 11 times 4. Let me close this and get that out of the way. Divided by 5, 44 divided by 5. 8.8, .8, is that right, folks? Uh, four sides, four marks, one mark each. Give yourself a little score out of four. And if you got four out of four, I insist you put a little happy face right there. A little happy face. Come on. Give yourself a score at the bottom of the page out of four if you want to. It'll help you add stuff up later. Next page. So complete the following chart. Assume the shape is a rectangle. I'm going to go a little faster. Last class, I did a long explanation. So those five of you that were away last class, watch the video. I went through this whole chart in detail. Here, I'm just going to go through the answers a bit quicker, and then I'll take questions afterwards. Original perimeter is going to be 2 times 9 is uh, 11, uh, 22. Original area is going to be 18. Linear scale factor is 5, so perimeter scale factor is going to be 5. Area scale factor is going to be 25, or 25 to 1. New dimensions are going to be times 5, 10 by, times 5, 45. New perimeter is going to be 110. New area is going to be 450. Is that right, folks? I did that all in my head. So, Zach, here's how I'm going to mark this. This line is worth two marks, a half mark off for each square that is incorrect. So what you're going to do is give yourself a little out of two right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven blanks. So if you get four of those blanks wrong, sorry, you're going to get zero on this row. Perimeter, uh, eight to 36. Area, 72. A four to three conversion factor. So to find that, it's going to be six times four divided by three. Uh, eight by... 12 times 4 divided by 3, 16. That's your new dimensions. New perimeter, 16 plus 8 is 24 times 2, 48. I think. Uh, new area, 18 times 6 is going to be 80 plus 48 is going to be 128. Is the new area 128? Woohoo! I'm on a roll, Mr. Duick. Conversion factor, or, or perimeter scale factor is the same as the linear, 4 to 3 or 4 over 3. Area scale factor is going to be 16 over 9 or 16 colon 9. Same idea, out of 2, half mark off for each square that's wrong. Original rectangle was 5 by 10. Perimeter is going to be 30. Area is going to be 50. Ooh, a little trickier now. They didn't give me the linear scale factor. Well, a 5 became a 25. A 10 became a 50. What did I multiply by? What is my linear scale factor here? 5 to 1. A uh, new perimeter is uh, 150. New area is 625. Yes? Ooh. No? What's the new area? 1,250, that's what I said. Can't you read? Okay. Where'd I get 625 from? Wow, do it. Um, oh, perimeter scale factor, uh, same as the linear. 5 to 1. Area scale factor, 25 or 25 to 1 or 25 colon 1. Again, out of 2. Uh, oh. New dimensions, the linear scale factor is 2 or 2 to 1, which means I must have started out with a 10 by 22 to end up with a 20 by 44. 10 by 22 will have a perimeter of 64. 10 times 22 is going to be 220. Uh, 128. Uh, 880. 2 to 1, and 4 to 1. Uh, 
Uh, oh, oh, they gave me the area scale factor. So now we're going backwards. Now I'm going to remember the stupid rhyme area square. Yeah? If I go from linear to area, I square it. How do I go backwards from area to linear? I don't square it. What's the opposite of squaring? Square rooting. So it's going to be the square root of that. It's going to be 8 to 1. Oh, I can do the original perimeter, uh, 10. Original area, 6. Uh, 8 to 1, so 2 times 8, 16. By 3 times 8, 24. New perimeter is going to be 80. No, yes. Uh, new area, uh, 6 times 64, 360 and 20, 384. Woohoo! I'm back. I fell off the horse here. Hello. Fell off the horse here, but I got right back on here. And perimeter is always the same as linear. Not 2 to 1, Mr. Duick. How about 8 to 1? Read your own writing. 49 to 1 means my linear was 7 to 1, square root going backwards. 42 by 49, if I multiplied all those by 7, I must have started out with a 6 by 7, which means I have a perimeter of 26 and an area of 42 and a new perimeter of uh, 42 and 49, 42 and 50 would be 82, so 80, 162? No? 42 plus 49 is 91, Mr. Duick. 182? Whew. Horse almost bucked me off, but I, 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 I stayed in the saddle. Area, holy schmole. Uh, 42 times 42 times 50 would be 22,000. I'm going to go... <clears throat> 2,058, am I right? Mr. Duick! I got some game. Okay. Uh, perimeter scale factor 7 to 1. Come on, admit it. Part of you is impressed there. I went 42 times 49 in my head. That's not bad. I cheated. I went 42 times 50 and then subtracted 42 because it's one less than that. My 50 times table, that I can do. Oh, no, no, no. The dance was so bad that it approached goodness. Let's be clear. Uh, t uh, again, out of two, again, out of two, again, out of two. Last one. Uh, well, let's do the perimeter in the area. Perimeter is going to be, uh, what is it going to be? 60? Area is going to be 144? No? 260? <gasps> Mr. Duick, I tried to do that one from memory. Terrible. I guess I don't know my 12 times table as well as I thought. Uh, area of four to nine or 4 over 9, or 4 ninths, uh, must have been a linear of 2 to 3, or 2 over 3, square root, square root. Which means uh, the new dimensions take these times by 2, divide by 3. 12. So to find 2 thirds of a number, it's literally 12 times 2 thirds. This is I do like the graphing calculator, because instead of a divided by, it puts a slash there, but I am just hitting my divided by key. Uh, 8 by uh, 18 times 2 divided by 3. Let's see if I can pull this one off in my head. 12. Uh, 8 by 12 is going to have a perimeter of add them together, uh, double 40. That's going to have an area of 8 times 12. 12 times 8 is going to be 80 plus uh, 60, 96. And the perimeter scale factor is the same as linear. 2 to 3. So give yourself a score on that question out of 14, please. And again, if you got 14 out of 14, you can have this. Okay. And again, if you're stuck, because I'm, I'm not explaining how I'm getting all these answers, hit me up later. Or I think last day I went into each one of these in more detail. Watch the video online. If you don't know where they are, this might be a good time to ask. Number three says, complete the following chart. Linear scale factor, 3 to 1. Surface area is 9 to 1. Square area. What was the rule for volume? You didn't square it. What did you do for volume? Cube it. And you know how I remember that? I just remember it's the next one up from square. To be honest, I haven't got a stupid rhyme. I know area, square area, volume is the next big oh, uh, What comes after a 2 cubed? So it's going to be 27 to 1. 
Uh, half mark for each of those. 5 to 2 is going to be 25 to 4. It's going to be 125 to 8. Square it, cubit. Oh, they gave me the area. So to get now, if they give me the area or the volume, I always want to find the linear first. So to get the linear, it's going to be square root, square root. It's going to be 4 to 5. And now I can find the volume because it's going to be cubed, cubed. It's going to be 64 to 125. Here they gave me the volume. I'm going to find the linear first. Ooh. Now here I square rooted. What do I do if they give me the volume? I don't square root. Cube root. Now you better know what that is on your calculator. Or between now and Monday, you better figure it out. I will not help you find that button on Monday. Cube root, which is 5 squared. 25. Cube root, which is 5 to 4, cube root of 125, cube root of 64, which becomes 25 to 16. Cube root, which is 7 to 4, which becomes 49 to 16. A half mark for each square, because it's out of 6, and there's 6 lines, and there's 2 squares in each line. There's 12 squares altogether. What's that you say, Tatiana? Yes, absolutely, if you got perfect, give yourself love it. To make your counting easier, why don't you give yourself a score out of 20 on this page? And let's keep going, turn the page. Okay. It says, complete the following table. <clears throat> All right. Uh, original surface area, 120. Now the linear scale factor is 2 to 1. That means that the area scale factor is 4 to 1, and the volume scale factor is 8 to 1. I went squared, I went cubed. So to find the new area, I'm going to multiply by 4. To find the new volume, I'm going to multiply the original volume by 8. Is that right, 480 and 1600? Half mark, half mark. The linear scale factor they gave me here was 1 to 4, so the area is 1 to 16, and the volume is 1 to 64. So to find the new area, I'm going to go 120 times 1 divided by 16, divided by because it's 1 to 16, not 16 to 1. And in fact, Nikki, I could have skipped the times by 1 part, but I'll put it in there so that I use the whole 1 to 16. Caught you, Midjohn. You're awake now, though? Good gosh, I've done called you Nikki twice. Alyssa. That's Nikki. Did you sit there last time? That's why I'm looking there and, okay. I'm sorry, Alyssa. I apologize deeply. Nikki, hi there, Nikki there. Hi, Alyssa, I'm sorry. I humbly apologize, you get a candy later on. Let's try that again. Alyssa, 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 my child, joy of my heart, light of my life, apple of my eye. Square it, right, cube it, and because it's a reduction, 120 times one divided by 16, my new surface area, 7.5, folks, is that right? And 400 times 1 divided by 64, uh, 6.25, there's my new volume. Now they're going to ask me to figure out the various scale factors. They told me the new area and the old area. I can find the area factor by going new divided by old. New divided by old. The area scale factor, this one here, is 9. What's my linear scale factor then? If this is my area, square area, what's my linear? 3. What's my volume? 27. So now I'm going to go 50. Sorry, I don't need to go 50 times 9 to get 450. But I can go 100 times 27 to get 2,700. And the linear scale factor is 3. Uh, by the way, I'm looking, the people that were last day are looking kind of dazed. Watch the video if you haven't already. And if you haven't already, you should have. Uh, let's see. 
They gave me the new volume and the original volume, so my volume scale factor is 64. How can I figure out my linear scale factor? Cube root, the linear scale factor is 4. And now that I know my linear scale factor, my area scale factor is going to be 16, so I'm going to multiply the 80 by 16. 80 times 16. Is your area 1280? And let's erase that. So the answer here would be 4, the answer here would be 1280. 5 to 2, that's going to be the same as 25 to 4, or 125 over 8 for my area and for my volume. So 60 times 25 divided by 4, there's my new area, 375. And 80 times 125 divided by 8, there's uh, 1250, there's my new volume. 3 to 2 is my linear, that means 9 to 4 is my area, that means that uh, cubed cubed 27 to 8 is my volume. So, 80 times 9 divided by 4, there's my new area. 120 times 27 divided by 8, there's my new volume, 405. Is that right, folks? So give yourself a score out of six there, half mark for each square. I'm going to do that just so it's not so cluttered. Nearly done. An object has an original surface area of 48 and a volume of 120. If the linear scale factor of 5 to 2 is applied, what's the surface area scale factor? Well, it's 5 to 2 squared. It's 25 to 4. What's the volume scale factor? It's 5 to 2 cubed. It's uh, 125 over 8. What's the new surface area? Original surface area times area scale factor. 400? No. 300? What's the new volume? Original volume times volume scale factor. 120 times 125 divided by 8, 1875. Uh, one mark, one mark, one mark, one mark. Give yourself a little score out of 10 here. And the last question. Below is a 1 centimeter to 15 meter scale model of the Statue of Liberty. Based on the scale model, what's the actual height? So I'm going to use this as my conversion factor. 1 centimeter to 15 meters equals when you measured with the ruler from here to here what did you get 4.6 4.7 yeah have I got to the answer yet patience so if you used 4.6 I'm gonna give you a range of answers I'm gonna give you a range of answers that's why hang on uh, that's the centimeters and x in meters. There's your real height. Tanner, how will I solve this equation? Did I mention lately that cross multi... Okay. I'm sorry, but it really is one of the most useful things you'll learn. x is going to be 15 times 4.6. x is going to be 15 times 4.6. 69, I'll take 69 meters. If you said 70 meters, I'd take that. What did you use? 4.7? I'd take 70.5. 4.5, which probably was what I was trying to make it, because I probably would have tried to make it close to a nice number. It's actually 67.5. So I'll take 70.5. I'll take 67.5. Alyssa, whose name I remembered this time, what was your question? Or did I answer it already? What did you round it off to? 
Sorry? Five centimeters, that's a that's a big chunk. You never round off before you do the count. Just a rule of thumb for math or physics. Never round off before you do a calculation. Round off afterwards. And if it's big, you got, you got a calculator. Okay? So I'm going to say it's out of two. I'm going to take a half mark off for that. So you would have got uh, 50, 75? Yeah. I would take that as well, 71. I would take 68 as well. In fact, I would say thank you for reading the instructions. Any other questions? So, here's how it works. Those five of you that were away, you're going to put a great big omit at the top. Otherwise, I'm giving you a zero. The rest of you, add up your score out of 36 and write it right there. Then, divide your score by 2 to give yourself a score out of 18. Okay? 